The National Liberty Alliance is attempting to subvert the Committee of Safety concept. Originally published on May 16, 2016 at libertyunderattack.com and read to you by the author. Note, it would behoove me to first say that the identifier sovereign citizen is an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms, if you will. A sovereign, abo sovereign is above all else. A citizen is a legally recognized subject of a state, thereby subordinate to a larger body. Although I will use that identifier throughout this article simply due to its notoriety and for purposes of clarity because the tactics pursued by folks with different labels, i.e. American State National, Freeman on the Land, etc., are almost identical. Also, make sure to check out Kyle Reardon's Committee of Safety PowerPoint presentation as well as my interview with Gary Hunt on the Committee of Safety concept. Quote, a committee of safety can be briefly defined as a mutual self-defense association that also operates as a parallel government. Historically, they are not under a variety of names, yet their function was exactly the same. To pool manpower for defense of the community and legitimize a self-organized populist government. End quote. Kyle Reardon, The Origins of the Harney County Committee of Safety article. I've been noticeably transparent about my previous involvement in a sovereign citizen group, especially so in the past week after Kyle and I produced an LUA Radio special edition titled, The Sovereign Citizens Are Douchebags. That involvement also consisted of interaction with the National Liberty Alliance, NLA, as well as a monthly donation for over a year to their organization. As with most sovereign citizens, I was duped into believing a bunch of mythology, most, if not all, of which is laughably unsub unsubstantiated. To put it more simply, they have not been transparent about their successes, unless you count the never-ending imprisonment of their practitioners, nor have they even provided sufficient documentation to verify their claims. On that same note, they have still failed to answer the list of questions Kyle asked over two years ago in his only on paper article, where he questioned their ideology. On April 30th, I mirrored his article titled, Fake Judges, How and Why Sovereign Citizens Are Undermining Patriot Groups. It wasn't long until the article went semi-viral, drawing unconstructive criticism, ad hominem attacks, and all sorts of fallacious comments. That said, I thought the refutation by Kyle and I of this gibberish was completed on May 7th, but it appears things are much worse than I expected. Not only are these folks parading around as fake judges, or just convincing hapless saps as to test out their already disproven theories, or muddying the waters for habeas corpus ad subjaciendum, but they are also attempting to subvert the Committee, Committee of Safety COS concept. A gainer at their COS page will alarm anyone that is even slightly knowledgeable in the idea. There are quite a few particularly atrocious documents, COS seal, call to share for first or second visit, example resolution, and even an extremely inaccurate PowerPoint presentation. To keep this short, I'll just say the NLA has no understanding whatsoever of how a COS is formed. They have no understanding of what it entails and cannot promote the concept without incorporating the failed attempts at an allegedly common law citizen's grand jury, as well as the inefficacious concept of the county sheriff, who is an elected official within the existing government. By contrast, a COS is a parallel government. The two are separate and by their nature remain as such. That, and NLA even had the audacity to bring up chemtrails, the New World Order, and FEMA camps in their PowerPoint presentation. A COS is a local government. As such, how can they begin to deal with these problems? Most disconcerting, the habeas corpus they file in courts is not ad subjaciendum. I can't say I'm surprised, but credibility is important. There's no reason to bring up unproven theories while promoting COS. It just muddies the water. Though it gets worse. Much worse. Further scouring that page in their website, I found their Committee of Safety Registry. In just three days, they had managed to triple the number of COSs formed in the past 20 years. That seemed suspicious to me, so I decided to register a fake COS just as a way of testing whether or not they were vetting these submitted applications. Uh, note the images, the, the screenshots are in the original article. Within an hour, it was added to the registry. I wasn't particularly surprised that it was, but I would have at least expected them to call the fake phone number I put in and realize it was bunk. Hell, when I was in that sovereign citizen group and offered to volunteer for them, they called me once a week for six months. Besides, are they acting coy by asking for the first name only? A legitimate phone number would be easily traced to its source. This arises some suspicion in my mind. Did this request even go to a human being, or was it just an automated approval? Keep in mind, this application was put in around 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday, May 15th. There's also another initial observation that warrants attention. The Harney County COS is not listed in this registry at the time of publication. That is a confirmed COS, and the NLA even republished my collaborative article with Kyle on the origins of the Harney County Committee of Safety. And of course, they removed all of our embedded hyperlinks and highlighted certain portions instead. 
Assuming the rest of those are real registrations again, the, promise, the process of forming a COS arises. If I was able to put through a fake one, how many of those others actually held a publicly announced town hall meeting in order to form a COS and sub subsequently elect committee men to serve the county? Are there any websites? A video? Anything? I would posit that most, if not all of these folks, possess no understanding of the COS concept whatsoever. Especially so if their introduction to it was by way of the NLA. It is also possible that some registrars simply thought this was comparable to a whitehouse.org petition, or even starting a 3% chapter in their state. I did that too, but resigned within a week. There are also a number of other issues. NLA is a top-down organization. It is not grassroots like COS are. Robert, being the National COS Committee Chairman, is representative of that fact. What they are doing is centrally planning the formation of COS. In many ways, this is reminiscent of the anti-libertarian Libertarian Party. On the other hand, Committee.org offers a couple of examples, but the bylaws and stipulations for joining are entirely up to the individuals in the specific county where, when they form their local COS. That said, the NLA's opposition to the New World Order, those at the top of the pyramid, should be reflected in their organization and actions, but that is surely not the case. Since these folks are constitutionalists, you would at least expect them to abide by copyright law, which is much more stringent than Creative Commons, never mind the BIPCOT no government license. Though that is not the case. Instead, they selectively chose those three documents Gary Hunt published on COS, yet dispensed of those that conflict with their confirmation bias. Worse, they don't even attribute them to him on their main COS webpage. How hard would it possibly be to add Gary Hunt, opposed to freedom, to the end of Committees of Safety Volume 1 and 2 and the historical documents? Apparently, it was too difficult for their webmaster. Guilt by association also comes into play, which could be applied under any of the aforementioned license. Gary's writing on the subject could connect him to the NLA, but that is inaccurate on its face. He and Kyle did an entire five-part series on Patriot Mythology, which debunks everything that NLA, everything the NLA stands for. Gary is not in any way, shape, or form connected to their nonsense. In fact, when the leadership of the NLA invited Gary to one of their conference calls, he deferred direct involvement and stipulated that a COS must be locally generated, and that he would wait and see how they proceeded before he could support what they were doing. He also suggested a knowledgeable person, who will be referred to as Mr. COS, that has studied both his work and independently studied the true COS concept, and who became quite knowledgeable on the subject. Apparently, NLA then made contact with Mr. COS, implying that they could work together, but failed to contact him again. They obviously wanted someone to accommodate them and their agenda, not someone to promote and truly educate their members about COS. Instead, they create a national position of the chairman for an individual named Robert, which is absolutely contrary to the entire concept. As an aside, Mr. COS was barred from discussing COS at one of the Stand By Me rallies in Oregon this past March. Regardless of what the NLA claims to be, they are just another sovereign citizen group. Just because you don't entertain the fiction such as bills of exchange, redeeming and or discharging through trust accounts, nor do you involve yourselves with contracts, commercial liens, and the exchanging of an oath of office for a value, does not therefore mean that you are not a sovereign citizen group, especially when you are filing frivolous court documents and even the occasional UCC commercial lien. After all, UCC was simply a recommendation for adoption by the states, and for the most part was adopted, though considerable changes have been made in most states from the original suggested model. Citing UCC is like citing the rules of monopoly when you want a bank loan. There is no legal authority to do so in LA. Note, the image below shows the Unified United States Common Law Grand Jury documents being rejected by the federal judiciary, and that image is in the original article. That said, the semantic games that will be played are meaningless. The actions taken to achieve said freedom are what matters, and with this nonsense it doesn't, nonsense, it doesn't help. For many, it gets them tossed into a rape cage. Freedom much? Conclusion. I highlighted the concerns I had briefly with the NLA's vetting process, but it doesn't just end there. One question I have is this. How genuine is their registry when they're, or they're not even vetting the applicants? No phone call? Nothing. On the original COS registry, they, have at least at, they at least have a phone call or an exchange of emails. That is not the case with NLA. This also makes the NLA's COS page extremely vulnerable to black hat hackers, whether it's by way of government agents or the private sector. Who knows? Tomorrow there may be 5,000 COS registered. The COS concept will now look like a joke with this lack of vetting. It's no different than putting in your name, phone number, and email for an online petition. Though, unlike one of those petitions, members of a COS will be out there doing things. 
A petition is simply begging those who falsely imagine themselves to be our rulers to please be nicer to us. If I had to posit a prediction, my fake COS will be taken down within a week, though I would also not be surprised if it remains there ad infinitum. The actions of the NLA, as well as the other sovereign citizens, need to be called out for the bullshit that they do. The COS, is, the COS concept is pretty cut and dry and has nothing to do with county sheriffs, contrary to the beliefs of those within NLA. Or maybe they are intentionally adding to, removing various elements to fit their agenda. Nonetheless, COS have proven their efficacy historically, and the county sheriff concept has surely not. For example, consider the actions, or inaction, by Sheriff David Ward in Harney County, Oregon during the state's turf war, also known as the occupation of the Malior Wildlife Refuge, not to mention anything of Article 16 within the 1876 Texas Constitution. Uh, 1A states, All elected and appointed officers before they enter upon the duties of their offices shall take the following oath or affirmation. I, blank, do solemnly swear, or affirm, that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of blank of the state of Texas and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and of this state. So help me God. End quote. A quick note on their UUSCLGJ. <laughs> there is a long forgotten political prisoner named Larry Myers. The indictment filed on March 15th, 1996 states that, quote, Defendant Myers signed militia arrest warrants in his capacity as a militia volunteer and constitutional common law enforcement officer. These arrest warrants were based on the CLC contempt order of the same date and were directed at Judge Walker and, and the other respondents. Myers mailed and caused them to be mailed. The C CLC contempt order of August 27, 1994, together with the arrest warrant of that date, to Judge Walker and the other respondents. End quote. Myers is still serving a seven-year prison sentence and is expected to be released sometime in 2019. Much like the inclination for sovereign citizens to file commercial liens against the government officials completely ignoring the 1998 United States versus Marsh decision, the filing of the lien is the crime, these folks will continue to attempt demonstrably f failed tactics until it gets them tossed in a rape cage. This is largely due to their inability to learn from history, therefore they are doomed to repeat it. Be wary of formal, uh, formal organizations like NLA. Also be wary of silver bullet solutions to the problem of tyranny especially if it consists of filing magical documents in court or setting up common law citizens grand juries you may just end up in you may just end up in a cage i think barry reed put it best quote avoid membership in political groups or other civic or organizations as a rule these groups are filled with super sneaky nosy individuals more willing than not to stab someone in the back if it suits their selfish purposes total snakes end quote You've just heard the National Liberty Alliance is attempting to subvert the Committee of Safety concept, originally published on May 16th, 2016 at libertyunderattack.com and read to you by the author. If you enjoyed this spoken discourse and the article and appreciate the time and effort put into it, please consider donating to Liberty Under Attack. Just go to paypal.me forward slash LUA radio to make a quick donation or visit the website for further options on the sidebar. Thanks in advance for your support.